So welcome everyone. Um, I'm Lucy, COO at Stribe, and welcome to our webinar today on how to get leadership buy-in for your employee engagement initiatives. We um, are so excited to have you all here um, and we also really encourage you to share what you've learned afterwards. We love to see the tips tr and tricks that you've picked up. So please make sure you share anything that you're interested in and make sure you tag Stribe as well so we can see all of those lovely learnings that you've picked up. Um, we are really here for you today. So any questions that you may have, please make sure you put them into the Q&A box. People can upvote them and then we'll have time at the end to go through them if um, you wish. We also want this talk to be really interactive. So um, we will have some polls and quizzes popping up throughout the webinar as well. Um, and so just to get started, um, I wanted to just pop this survey up. Um, this will help me frame some of the advice um, that we get as we move through the webinar. So I will leave that there for you to answer. Um, for those that don't know, we are Stribe. We focus on creating software that really works for your team and the unique environment that you operate in. Every employee, team and organisation is different. And we recognize that you need pulse survey software that will support you through everything that your organization is experiencing. We work with organizations such as the UK Space Agency, Newcastle United Foundation, um, and councils such as Bolton, Barkin and Dagenham, as well as the NHS. Um, we have a fabulous team that work alongside you to craft everything from the way you launch Stribe to the surveys you send to help you really achieve your goals. Today in this webinar, it's a super packed agenda and I've made sure to weave lots of really actionable insights into every slide. So you'll take loads away that can help you improve things. But again, just as a reminder, there is that poll there. So please do answer it just to help us understand a little bit more about how we can tailor this webinar to you. Um, for those that can't stick around for the full webinar, we'll be sending the recording out to you afterwards. So absolutely no pressure if you do have some time constraints. I'm hoping we're about 40 minutes long today um, just to buy you uh, some extra time back in your afternoon. Um, so what will we be covering? Uh, we'll be covering what the biggest blockers to gaining leadership buy-in are. We're going to be helping you identify some of those organizational challenges to support your conversations. We're going to talk about how you can align your engagement strategy with those business objectives and then touching a little bit on things like creating internal champions, gathering evidence to create a business case, preparing your pitch and the all important overcoming objections from your leadership team. We'll also have time for Q&A at the end. So I think we all know this already, but I'm just going to cover it off. How your leadership team feel about employee engagement is directly linked to your engagement levels as an organisation. Organisations with the lowest level of engagement are led by people who don't take employee engagement very seriously in the first place. While almost 90% of highly engaged organisations say that employee engagement is important to leadership, less than 20% of somewhat disengaged or disengaged organisations can say the same thing. So though your leaders might know it's time for investment into new tools or initiatives, actually getting them on board for that implementation might take a little bit of persuasion. To make the best case, you will need to begin with how change will benefit them and ease any concerns that new initiatives may gather cobwebs once the novelty is worn off. For example, only 55% of organisations say that they regularly consider and action their employee engagement data. Well, that's actually a really scary statistic, statistic and something that really plays on your leaders' minds. You need to make sure that they can visualise how you will use the data from your initiative that you're trying to introduce to make a real difference in employee engagement. And that might be um, productivity as well and how, sorry, I've lost my train of thought already, and how the results will inform your work in other areas such as talent acquisition, management or productivity. Providing this evidence doesn't need to be difficult. You've just got to speak their language. So this webinar is going to be that resource that you need to help um, you in your journey to gaining leadership buy-in for your employee engagement solutions.
Um, as I mentioned, we are a survey provider. So some of the examples that we give throughout will kind of lean towards that um, purchasing kind of survey software. But again, as I mentioned, we have got the chat um, available for you. So any extra questions that you have, please do make sure you pop them into the chat box or the Q&A and I can try and pick them up as we go along. So when you're on this journey, it's really important for us to recognize that gaining leadership buy-in for employee engagement initiatives hinges on understanding their mindset and their priorities. So over the next few slides, we're going to delve into why this understanding is so essential and how it can influence our approach when pitching for investment. As an aside, I will say um, some of the fonts might little, look a little wonky in my slides. Um, there's been some issue with Canva today. So um, I tried to fix it, but there's, there's there are some, yes, even tech companies experience tech issues. And today, um, today is our day and our turn for that. Um, so barriers to gaining buy-in from leadership. These challenges that um, we come across can really vary depending on the organization's culture, maybe the leadership style, industry, and specific circumstances. But some of the really common ones that we come across quite frequently are limited resources. Things like budget constraints or competing priorities within organizations can make it really difficult for leadership to allocate resources to engagement initiatives if they can't see an immediate or tangible return. Um, resistance to change is a really big one that we see as well. Some leaders prefer sticking with existing practices or strategies, even if there is evidence to suggest that improvements are needed. Um, hierarchy and power dynamics is definitely another one as well. Um, sometimes these can hinder open communication and collaboration between kind of HR departments or senior leadership, and it can make it challenging for HR managers to really advocate for your ideas and gain your buy-in as well. Lack of awareness or understanding too. So leadership actually may just not be fully understanding of the potential benefits of the proposed initiative, such as engagement programs or perhaps new software such as survey software. There can also be a um, really big focus on short term results and difficult to measure um, ROI. So employee engagement is a really long term game. Um, we all know this on this webinar today, um, but leaders may look to allocate budget to initiatives that present with a really, really clear and easy to measure ROI um, or give short term kind of financial gains or operational efficiencies. At the moment, we're all operating in a really tough financial environment and this is something we're seeing more and more in those conversations um, this does then mean that there is that there's no budget or no approval for those um, engagement projects addressing these challenges successfully will mean effectively communicating the business case for your initiative um, aligning them with your organizational objectives and demonstrating their potential impact on kpis something we'll get onto a little bit later it may also involve building relationships with some of those key stakeholders, creating a culture of trust and transparency and leveraging data and evidence to support those proposals. The key to this, first of all, is understanding the mindset of the leadership and their priorities. So, as I mentioned, your leadership team will set the tone for your organisational culture and strategic direction. So by understanding their mindset, we can really make sure we're tailoring our proposals to resonate with their values and their objectives. Without this, our pitches may miss the mark or fail to address key concerns leading to resistance or rejection. So alongside kind of the barriers that we just thought about, some of the things that we might want to consider are things like the strategic objectives of the team. So leadership are typically focused on achieving those really kind of large strategic objectives or driving business growth or maybe hitting annual plans. Your proposals need to align with these objectives to gain their support. For example, if a key focus of your organization this year is to improve customer retention or customer satisfaction, we can then highlight in our proposal how engaged employees contribute to better experiences. But to be more specific, if you're looking to implement new employee survey software, for example, you may want to highlight research that shows that by giving your employees strong feedback channels, you will create a culture of collaboration that in turn enhances things like innovation and idea sharing, and that can all lead to improved service product and thus customer satisfaction. Why do employee surveys improve 
um, customer satisfaction and how does that all link together? Well, for this example, you might want to speak to the fact that the employees closest to the customer are often the ones that have the best insights, suggestions and solutions, but are usually also the ones that are without some of the um, employee feedback channels that other areas of the business benefit from. So systems such as survey software help them feel really empowered to share those ideas that you can then harvest. Another challenge that we see often is risk aversion. Many leaders are currently, in particular, really cautious about making big investments in resources. Um, understanding their risk tolerance really helps us frame our proposals in a way that gets rid of those risks or mitigates those risks and emphasizes the potential returns. So the best way to do this is to demonstrate how the initiative you're proposing will really give them those tangible benefits. Break down those elements of employee engagement into areas that really speak to your leaders and then back those up with evidence. For example, if you're looking to buy a, a product or a piece of software, look for case studies or quotes that you can use to demonstrate that the project that you're looking to introduce work, really works in similar organisations and has that desired impact. For example, we were working really closely with a college to support the introduction of Strive to their employees and their senior leadership team were really focused on how our technology would support them with good response rates so they could create change that represented everyone. Um, we provided them with a case study in an organisation really specific to them um, and a customer to speak with as well who could share those impacts in person. So if you are looking at working with a provider, just make sure you're speaking with them about the opportunity you have to get those case studies. The final thing that your leadership team will be um, thinking about and looking for is those metrics and those KPIs. Ultimately, your leadership team are the ones that are held accountable on um, the metrics and KPIs that are set out for them in the financial or strategic plans. You should really be aligning your proposals as closely as possible with measurable outcomes that resonate against those. That might involve linking employee engagement initiatives to metrics such as productivity, turnover, customer retention, or maybe increased profitability. Um, and whilst there are lots of stats out there to support the link between employee engagement initiatives such as employee survey software, and improving the KPIs your leadership team will care about, the best thing that you can do is find evidence as specific to your sector or organisation as possible. That might mean you have to hunt around a little bit internally um, to see if you've got maybe any smaller or comparable projects that are running within your own organisation, or looking externally and speaking again to that supplier to gather those stats. For example, are any of your departments, directorates or teams currently running surveys on free software such as Teams or Google, but the response rates aren't great? Um, or like I said, have the vendors you're speaking with got case studies specific to you? Gathering all of this evidence will really, really help you demonstrate um, your thinking about these areas. And once we understand leadership's mindset and their priorities, we can then really easily tailor our proposals to them by speaking their language and addressing their concerns. Um, all of this will increase the likelihood of securing that buy-in and that investment. Um, so by understanding these common blockers and um, to introducing your employee engagement initiatives, you'll be able to more effectively identify and address those bigger challenges, which will ultimately lead to more informed and thoughtful conversations. So now we understand a little bit more about that, we're going to now talk about the essential steps for crafting that winning proposal um, that really resonates with leadership, overcomes those challenges and secures investment for you for your next employee engagement initiative. Um, just while we pause for a second, I'm just going to end this poll here. Um, So step one, your leaders need to be able to visualize how you will use the data to make a real difference in your company objectives. One of the easiest ways to do this is to identify where you currently have challenges in meeting those and understanding how that employee engagement initiative may be able to support that. So if you are a slightly smaller team or maybe you have less easily identifiable challenges, a good way to get this buy-in is to involve the leadership team in the process of identifying the challenges or objectives. Um, doing this together will help them become more invested and motivated to take action with you 
Um, I understand this isn't always possible, um, but just any, any way that you can make sure that they can see that they have a role to play in the process that you are um, going through will help get their buy-in. Um, having this buy-in will not only help you take action, but it will also really help employees feel that leadership are actively engaged in the process too, which ultimately benefits their engagement anyway. Um, employees really need to know that their leaders have a genuine interest in their well-being and their engagement. And it comes back what, to what we spoke about at the start. Well, almost um, with almost 90 percent of highly engaged organizations saying employee engagement is important to leadership. So it's a really key component of this process. Um, there are a few different kind of ways that you can look at the organizational challenges. Um, some examples of the ones that will support your business case might be things like high employee turnover rates. For example, engaged employees are more likely to feel valued, motivated and committed to their work. Um, they are 59% less likely to look for a job with a different organisation. So if you have got high employee turnover rates, that is a really good challenge to be thinking about tackling. Um, when it comes to things like employee surveys, they will help you uncover those underlying issues that contribute to employee turnover, such as um, dissatisfaction with management or lack of growth opportunities. So this gives you that opportunity to really be proactive about addressing them. Another organizational challenge that I know some larger kind of more enterprise customers of ours um, deal with quite frequently is just a communication breakdown. Um, many employee engagement initiatives really help to kind of promote open communication. They help to improve psychological safety and create that culture of collaboration. Um, not only that, but if you are looking at introducing employee surveys, um, and this is kind of why you've joined us on that webinar today, they're actually really gonna help you identify any gaps or barriers within organizations, giving you the tools you need to address those issues and improve that overall effectiveness. Um, for example, we had a customer that I worked with a little while ago who asked questions of their um, employees about, do they feel they get all the information they need to do their job? Um, they felt like there was some communication breakdown going on. Um, they couldn't understand why the senior leadership were really aware of um, their goals, their organization's mission and vision, and other um, teams were not so. Um, we actually worked with them to segment that data by whether folk were the senior leadership team, line managers, whether they were employees or um, had another area of management responsibility. And actually every other demographic that you viewed their data with didn't give any clarity. But as soon as you looked at those management responsibilities, we could start to see where that breakdown was. And it was essentially um, at a team lead level. Um, the team leaders were kind of assuming that the information was just for them and weren't passing it down to their teams. So a super simple fix in place that really, really improved the overall communication of that organization. Another challenge that you might want to think about is um, looking at your proposal in the light of is absenteeism and presenteeism. So obviously engaged employees really feel a sense of purpose and fulfillment in their work and that in turn reduces absenteeism and presenteeism. So if you're looking at it through the lens of trying to bring in a new employee survey software, um, that survey software can help you identify the factors that contribute to absenteeism, such as workplace stress, job dissatisfaction and health issues. And it would also implement, help you implement, sorry, those targeted interventions to support with well-being. So really creating tailored um, solutions to those concerns. Another organizational challenge that um, quite a few of our customers actually experience is um, safety incidents. So um, this is a really, really key one um, and a very, very kind of basic need that we need to meet for employees around safety. Um, we know that engaged employees are more attentive and committed to following things like safety protocols, safety procedures, um, and all of this reduces the likelihood of safety incidents. So if you're looking at it again with uh, introducing employee surveys, you might want to speak with your senior leadership team about how employee surveys will help you understand how employees' perceptions of safety um, rate is and also gather ideas for areas of improvement. For example, you might find out there's inadequate training, maybe there's a lack of safety equipment, or maybe there's just ineffective communication about safety practices. Another kind of organizational challenge that you might want to think about is the skill gap. 
um, talent shortages. So if you are um, struggling with that at the moment, um, we know that initiatives that prioritize employee development and training can really help bridge those skill gaps and address um, talent shortages. So not only can employee surveys kind of help you identify those skill gaps and training needs, but they will also tailor um, help you tailor training programs to address those gaps as well and really start to understand where employees feel like they want developed. Change management as well. I suspect everyone on this call is starting to think about that or is currently going through some form of change. Um, engaged employees are infinitely more adaptable and receptive to change, which makes it easier to facilitate through smoother transitions um, during change initiatives. For example, if you were looking at that in the, with the lens of employee surveys, um, this can help you introduce, um, can help you understand employees' attitudes to change, identify potential resistance, um, perhaps there's specific teams or job roles that are feeling uh, more resistant to that change and help you also gather feedback to help you move effectively through times of change. So all of these points um, will help you kind of speak with your SLT um, about those concerns. The final challenge is often competitive advantage. It's not one we think about a lot, but when we're striving for better performance for our customers, for financial growth, um, or for our employees, competitive advantage really, really comes into it. Um, we know that a highly engaged workforce is a really key differentiator for organizations. It gives you high levels of innovation, productivity, and customer satisfaction. All of this contributes towards that competitive advantage. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking about that in terms of bringing in employee survey as your employee engagement initiative, employee surveys can really help you assess employee engagement levels and identify areas for improvement in your overall service as well. Um, this helps you kind of enhance that employee experience and maintain that competitive edge as well. So what might this look like in practice? So I've just laid out um, an example of how you might want to think about uh, breaking down that organizational challenge. So for us, um, our example challenge is our, our employee turnover rate in the marketing team has increased and we're now losing people faster than we can replace them. Uh, we're planning for a new product launch in three months as well, which is not helpful when we don't have a full um, an ACCUS team um marketing team and we really need their support with that as well so we are in a little bit of a bind um for us uh obviously i've spoken quite a bit about surveys because that is our area of expertise but the employee engagement initiative we're looking to bring in um is employee surveys we want to use them to understand why our marketing talent are leaving at such a high rate why it's gotten worse as the year has progressed and we want to use that data to really help us shape solutions that we can work with the marketing leadership and our senior leadership team on so some of the intangible benefits that we might look to um, speak with our senior leadership team about is um, that by using these surveys we can identify um, if our marketing team are perhaps feeling neglected or they're being discouraged by the difficult economic environment, um, perhaps they're disengaged due to change in their workload as we approach this big product launch. Um, and that will help us understand what their warning signals are for the future so we can avoid this employee retention challenge going forward. So um, the intangible benefits around that will be things like team morale and cohesion. Um, we can use that knowledge that we've gathered from the surveys to elevate our employee brand and attract that top talent that we really so desperately need um, and improved market reputation as well. If we have an amazing all singing or dancing marketing team who are highly engaged, we're going to get that improved reputation as well. Then some of the tangible benefits that we might want to look at. Um, obviously, leadership will understand how to motivate and reward employees and we'll see that higher employee engagement and um, higher employee retention as a result. Um, we'll know that the marketing team will feel appreciated and heard and a happy marketing team will equal happy customers and a better service, which has a positive impact on the bottom line. So when we're looking at those tangible benefits, that will be things like reduced turnover, which reduces recruitment costs. These can then be diverted to other strategic initiatives, for example, the product launch itself. Um, a more stable workforce also means no delays in the project deliverables. And we're retaining that knowledge and that expertise that we know contributes to that, um, ultimately to that bottom line. So we just wanna break it down into those intangible benefits and tangible benefits. 
um, to really ensure that we're tying those organizational challenges to the solution and then back into um, back into those KPIs and improvements. So step two in all of this is to align your engagement strategy with your business objectives. So your engagement strategy and your um, employee engagement initiative should not exist in a vacuum. Um, we want to work with leadership and managers to identify those business objectives or challenges and then tie those in with your um, initiative. When business leaders can see how your initiative will relate to their overall business objectives, they will get on board. Um, so part of this is really working closely with senior leaders and department heads to understand what your organization's priorities and strategic direction is. And during these conversations, really try and identify any challenges that they might foresee in hitting those goals, because that is where you will want to focus for um, connecting your initiative and your strategy to, to those objectives. So once you have those business objectives and challenges in mind, make sure you can define, define sorry, the measurable goals and KPIs that you can track whilst you're introducing and maintaining this employee engagement initiative. So not only will you want to think about the measurement um, whilst you're embedding it, but you'll also want to make sure that you can regularly measure the effectiveness of it and make adjustments as needed. Um, this is just to make sure that your initiative continues to align with the evolving business priorities and external influences as you have that. So it's really amazing that um, we have the, the idea of these challenges and these objectives and how we can um, demonstrate improvement in those goals and KPIs when we first introduce it. But if we are looking for renewed business and financial support going through maybe year one, year two, year three, we want to make sure that we have regular measurements of um, whatever initiative it is so that we can continue to get that financial support and that senior leadership buy-in. Um, and we also need to remember that as we're going through year one, year two, year three, year four of whatever contract it is that you're working on or whatever initiative it is you're working on, everything around us is changing at the same time. The financial landscape is changing. Our employees are changing. So we just want to make sure that we're able to measure as we go and understand how we need to maybe adjust that initiative to continue to be effective. So to do that, firstly, you want to make sure that you can clearly explain the link between whatever it is that you are looking to improve in the employee engagement world and the KPI that you're focusing on improving. For example, that might be customer retention, uh, sorry, customer satisfaction or retention, productivity um, or employee retention. Um, you can get this evidence from a range of different places. So, um, for example, research studies, industry reports. Um, or if you're looking to implement a service or software, case studies are really, really valuable. Um, focus on case studies that really give you that clear demonstrable link between your initiative and the business KPI you want to influence. Um, another way to demonstrate this is to look for examples of companies who are known for certain values. So, for example, customer centric culture. Find out what they do to improve employee engagement in a way that drives that positive customer outcome. Um, all of this will give you some really amazing evidence, but the top tier ones are definitely case studies. If you are working with a supplier or software, um, case studies relevant to you are always absolute gold when you're looking to sell this into senior leaders. Um, secondary to that, we'll be looking at other organizations and the way they're doing it. Um, if you don't have any contacts in similar organizations that you know are really driving for the values and the KPIs that you're looking to work to, just reach out to them on LinkedIn. I've done it multiple times with people and they're more than happy um, to share as much as they can about what they're doing, how they're working on it and what challenges they came in. So my top tip for this slide is just don't be shy. If there is someone out there doing amazing things, pop them a compliment, tell them how much you love it and then ask them how they're, how they're finding it because they will more than likely 99% of the time be very, very happy to share and help you out. So step three is... Um, just create internal champions. So these people will be your key decision makers um, when it comes to deciding whether or not to commit to a new initiative or software. So identifying a couple of internal champions will really, really help you on that journey. Um, look for someone who has credibility and is respected within your organization and make sure they're really confident and knowledgeable, not only in their own department, but also around um, solving the challenges of employee engagement. 
Uh, these people will not only become your sounding board as you work through conversations with leadership, but will also give you that added boost um, to your proposal when it's finally time to pitch it to um, your senior leadership team. Step four, we are now going to talk about gathering evidence to create a business case. So um, looking at the challenges that you identified in step one and think about ways that you can gather data points related to them. So it's really amazing to be able to find specific examples with data points relating to your teams. Um, this will demonstrate that with a more thorough kind of ability to gather, for example, feedback or measure the pulse of your organization, you can create really realistic um, solutions and impactful solutions to your organizational challenges. This data can come from the research that you did in step two um, to align your business objectives with your employee engagement initiatives, or it might come from kind of other internal data sources that you have. So you might want to look at things like if you do run employee surveys already, what are the results of that? Um, you might want to look at your own internal performance metrics um, or industry benchmarks. And again, speaking externally to others can help as well. Step five, now you have all of the key points. It's now time to build that pitch or proposal so that it will really resonate with your leaders. Um, on a high level, you really want to explain how the initiative you're introducing will integrate, um, first of all, with kind of um, other systems or processes you have. Um, you want to demonstrate how it will improve those KPIs and objectives overall. And you also really want to talk about how now is the right time to introduce that change. Um, it's also an amazing opportunity to showcase that support you have received from your internal champions. Um, proving now is the right time to introduce change is a really difficult one. I'm sure some of you are sat there thinking, what does that mean and how am I going to do that? Um, that is why I've labored so much on gathering all of that evidence and that alignment with your business objectives and with those and, and um, gathering evidence, aligning it with your business objectives and making sure that the initiative you introduce will really um, in, improve those KPIs that you're working with. Having all of that in place will ensure that there is no question that now will always be the right time to introduce that new change and having that external evidence as well of maybe a case study from the initiative that you're looking to introduce, whether it's a piece of software or a service um, or having spoken with those uh, like minded organizations will really, really bolster your argument as well. It's also a great opportunity when you're working through this proposal to address and alleviate any potential concerns of your leadership. Um, will have. They're going to really appreciate that you've already thought around all of the obstacles and challenges and have come up with solutions for them. Um, it also makes it really hard to say no to. Uh, so for example, with employee surveys, we often see concerns around being overwhelmed with information that is, that is received through the surveys or possibly not having the resources available to make the suggested changes. So overcoming these challenges in your pitch will go a really long way um, to demonstrating that you've really thoroughly researched the solution. So I'll just go through some of those challenges now. Um, for example, show that you've really considered how you will implement the initiative. Oftentimes leadership teams can worry about the implementation and how that will go. Will it affect productivity? You know, is it going to waylay too many of your team onto a separate task that wasn't maybe pre-agreed at the start of the year? Will it take so long that it's going to affect ROI? And when are they going to see that ROI? Um, if you're working with a supplier, make sure you ask them for information about onboarding, training and resources and estimations of how long it will take to see that return on investment as well. All of that will really, really help you answer any concerns around that. When we're looking at things like software, um, inclusivity is a really important one, particularly for organisations and those of you out there that are perhaps working with dispersed workforces or offline workforces. Is your chosen software solution accessible, for example, by web, by app or by offline, offline colleagues? Um, for us in the survey industry, we are consistently asked, can colleagues respond from everywhere? For us, it's a very resounding yes. Um, but we just want to make sure that we've thought about the accessibility for all colleagues, because, again, when we're looking at that return on investment, when we're looking at that impact on those organisational um, objectives, we want to make sure that we're, we're working with as big a group of colleagues as possible to make sure that we're getting the maximum return for our investment.
You also really want to highlight how your leadership team will benefit. Yes, the solution is going to work for you. Yes, it's going to do amazing things for the work for your team. But you really want to kind of remove yourself from this proposal and make them feel good about the work they're doing. Um, explain how your initiative will support their work too. So again, we're tying it back to those um, organizational challenges and objectives, which I know I keep banging on about, but it's very important. <laughs> Finally, um, reports. Make sure you detail how you're going to report on things like your progress, improvements, identifying any challenges along the way and your successes as well. This will show that you're really, really focused on driving improvements and you want to make the most out of any employee engagement initiative you're introducing. In your proposal, you could even mention things like um, checkpoints and deadlines to firm this up. So um, senior leadership team can see that you're being really proactive about over communicating the success of the project. One thing in all of this to keep in mind is that once you've done your research, um, if you are looking at introducing a new supplier or software provider, um, it can sometimes be worth narrowing down your options to perhaps a couple of suppliers. Um, it may be that you have a preferred supplier, but perhaps sometimes bringing your leadership team into that decision will get their buy-in a little bit earlier in the process. And it sometimes reduces as well the amount of time and energy you need to spend building your case. Um, so it's just a little aside to keep in mind there. And now the final step, um, there are always going to be a lot of questions or objections from leadership. We have seen a lot in our time. So if anyone is in the process of um, going through this, um, pulling proposals together and thinking about ways that they can bring their leadership team on board and I don't address your question or your um, any objections that you foresee coming your way, just let me know. Um, you can pop them in the webinar chat or the Q&A or email me separately and we can work through those with you. Um, but yeah, we've seen a lot. So I pulled together some of the most common ones that we see um, so we can go through them together. But again, if you have more, just pop them in the, pop them in the chat or um, send me a message separately. So some of the... Um, I've only got three here. They're quite big ones, though. So the, the first one that we see a lot is, you know, we're trying to focus on a lot more concerns um, right now. You know, perhaps we've got budget issues. Perhaps we've got um, project concerns. Why do we need to devote time and budget to this? This feels like a distraction. So for this kind of objection, what you want to do is really draw from your business um, objectives, your organizational objectives and KPI work. If one of your key struggles, for example, is attracted, attracting and retaining talent, make sure that you highlight that by keeping your employees engaged, um, you're really going to be able to improve that retention. Um, and highly engaged employees are 87% less likely to leave their workforce. So it's just about making sure that you are tying um, that ROI back in. Um, Perhaps they're concerned about productivity. It's at an all-time low. Why should we spend money and time engaging with our employees if we can't even get them to perform better and faster? Um, we This one, um, again, just tying it back into that, that rewards, that recognition. 69% of employees feel like they would work harder if their bosses appreciated their efforts. Um, something that would have an impact on productivity, especially for seven out of 10 of your employees is definitely something that you should be thinking about putting in place to fix those concerns. So, um, you know, really trying to draw out those, those stats and, and making them um, work for you. And then this one's a little bit more survey software specific. Um, but one we see a lot is um, talking about our, our people are so busy, they're so stressed and frustrated, why should we give them one more thing to do and one more thing to think about? And for this one, we, we again, we have lots of case studies to prove otherwise. Um, these are more general answers, but what you want to do is kind of build that general answer out and then um, fill in your more specific research to really um, make sure it packs a punch. But for us, what we do is we speak to the fact that um, a lot of business leaders say that they know that employee performance and productivity is one of their biggest challenges. Um, but we also know that only 17% of those business leaders are actually investing in employee engagement. Employees are 
um, so much more likely to feel empowered and perform their best work if they feel that their feedback and ideas are valued by the organisation. So that would be my starting point for that objection. But what I would then do is lead into any specific projects you have in your organisation that you can point to. So if you've done a little mini survey before and you know that perhaps there's one team leader, for example, that does their own employee surveys, perhaps you can then... Um, use that to showcase that this particular team runs their own surveys and they have hit x y and z kpis um, and you're really making that super tangible for your business leaders so to summarize um that is we are nearly on the 40 minute mark so i i feel like i've done quite well um starting point for all of this is to gain an understanding of the barriers to um, engagement and to getting your senior leaders on board. Are you limited by your resources, your resistance to change, perhaps power dynamics, or is there more of a focus on your short term outlook? Then you want to really understand your leadership's mindset. What are their strategic objectives and how can your proposal align to these? Are they really risk averse and how can you counter this? And what metrics do they care about and how can you monitor these with your initiative? Then you want to think broader about the organisational challenges and align your strategy to those. Um, there will be some duplicate work here with that mindset um, piece, but you just want to make sure that you can demonstrate how your initiative will impact those business KPIs. So it's always worth doing that extra step. Next, you want to find and create some internal champions that on that leadership team that will support your proposal. Um, if it's software, for example, oftentimes IT folk um, are a great one to kind of try and get on board. Um, if it's something more to do with customer satisfaction or um, business growth, your marketing and sales team. So just think about who your allies will be in that conversation. The next step is to gather evidence to create your proposal. So try and gather really specific art examples and data points to create clarity and credibility with your proposal. So that might be through case studies, that might be through speaking with external organisations, or perhaps there's examples, um, almost like pilot studies of that initiative happening within your organisation already that you can use as an example. Finally, you want to prepare your pitch. So make sure you use it as an opportunity to alleviate any potential concerns around areas such as implementation, inclusivity, or maybe reporting on progress. Um, and that is it from me. I don't think I can see any questions. Um, I'm just going to double check now. Um, but does anyone want to pop anything in um, to the webinar chat or the Q&A? Um, at all i will just kind of wrap start wrapping up but um i will give you a couple of minutes to pop anything in if you do have any questions um oh the chat was off apologies team um i will rectify that for the next webinar but if you do have anything you can pop it in the q a box um there will be a recording ella um so, and we will be circulating that not only to you folk that have joined, but also anyone that signed up for the webinar. And you will be free to share that with your colleagues as well. So um, it would just be a YouTube link that you can pop around your team if you think it would be useful for anyone else. Um, so if you do have any other questions, I've just got a couple more things to cover. Um, uh, housekeeping more than anything. And then so you will have some time to pop them in if you want to. But thank you so, so much for joining me today. Um, after this, if you did pick up any insights, um, please do feel free to share them on socials, tag myself and Stribe. We absolutely love hearing about what you've learned from these talks. We will be sharing the recording of the talk afterwards. So like I've said, feel free to share with colleagues who will find this useful. And if you do need anything else from me or the team or have a quick question or need some advice on Pulse surveys, please do get in touch. We're really, really friendly and we love chatting to you. So um, please do let us know. Um, perfect. So I think that's it for today. It's been amazing having you all here. Thank you so, so much. And we really look forward to seeing you on the next webinar very, very soon. Goodbye.